I'm kind of old. True. My life's kind of boring. Also true. But I'll film it anyway. No one asked for this. Hope you're ready for it, cause I'm blocking till Christmas Day. Oh my god, please never let me do that again. everybody welcome to vlogmas number four i decided to touch some grass this morning i feel like i was just in desperate need of touching grass today so i decided to get outside doing my morning walks is something that i used to do a ton when i lived here like i would say a few times a week and so it feels nice to get out in some nature enjoy the nice cooler temps it's like i don't know 48 degrees this morning or something so quite brisk but yesterday was like 81 degrees i'm like where are these december temperatures but anyways I figured I would start out this day with a little movement and I don't know walks for me are very grounding it just makes me feel more in touch with nature more in touch with myself I get to like listen to a podcast or in today's case I listen to a little bit of Christmas music and then tortured poets department of course and just like kind of take a moment I'm like oh yeah this is what um, these people are calling going outside I should try it more often so yeah it feels good to move around a bit I'm taking a little break to enjoy this beautiful scenery and then I'll head back but yeah in case you haven't noticed by this vlog miss um, I've been trying really hard to get back into a movement routine just because it makes me feel mentally better most of the time and then it also makes me feel physically better a lot of the time and so I feel like that's just something that's really been missing from my life you know I, I'm not trying to sound like a complainy person there are so many worse things going on in the world of course but just speaking for like my own life personally it's been a really rough five months we've lived here back in Arizona for five months now and it, it's just not been the transition we expected nor wanted and I've talked about that a million times but it's just such a weird thing to like not be fully content somewhere um, and like home is where you make it right like I you know my home is like living with Drew but yeah it's just been weird and then on top of it I think I've been sort of struggling with like my relationship with food as a result and full disclosure I want to give like a content warning in case food is a sensitive topic I do not want to trigger anyone but I have been struggling a lot with basically like um, binge eating as a result I've put on some weight and it's really tricky to like talk about on the internet because there's just so many opinions and so many different um, like landmines to like sidestep you know what I mean um, but yeah I think going back like god a decade two decades ago i really struggled a lot with um like restrictive eating and i was a normal size but i just like i don't know diet culture really got in my brain and i was really affected by growing up in the early 2000s and so I struggled a lot in my like late teens, early 20s with like very restrictive eating. And then starting, I don't know, in my 30s, I feel like the pendulum swung in the complete opposite direction. Um, I discovered like the body confidence, body neutrality movement, which is amazing, by the way. Um, and I still stand by everything I've ever said, but I think I kind of went from like the restrictive eating to the body positive to the like binge eating pipe line and I don't know I feel like I don't even know if I want to talk about this but it's just something that's been on my chest I really 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 don't want to upset anyone or say anything wrong so I sincerely apologize if that's what I'm doing but um yeah I need to find like a balance because it's like it feels like I'm either a hundred percent like trying to 
eat clean and exercise every day and like do the thing and try to like focus 100% on like my wellness and lifestyle and all that kind of stuff. Or I'm like 100% the opposite direction, like door dashing, fast food all the time and never exercising, not even getting like 100 steps in in a day most of the time, you know, working from home. And so I'm just, I'm trying to like strike a balance and it's just really tough. And so obviously, as you can expect, there have been quite a few body image issues that have come up. Um, yeah, full disclosure, I've gained a little bit of weight and my weight always fluctuates. So I don't put my worth in my weight. Um, and everything that I've talked about over the last, what, five, six years that I've been making content focused around being neutral about your body and like your body not defining you and all of that, I still believe it 100%. And I've talked about this before. I feel like sometimes I believe it more for other people than I do myself. And like, I feel like I need to give myself that same grace that I give other people. Um, but it's just really hard. And so I'm just, I'm fighting tooth and nail basically um, to try and remain in like a neutral to healthy space about my body mentally. And um, it's really hard. I'm fighting for my life over here, full disclosure. So. I just, in case anyone else was also going through something similar, I know this isn't like a very vlogmasy kind of topic, but also it's just real. It's like what I'm going through at the moment and I'm trying my best to just like push through it. I am PMSing, so I'm feeling all of the feelings. But yeah, I just kind of, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm regressing in a lot of ways in like all of the progress that I've made over the last several years. And I've talked about that too, where how you learn all of this stuff and then like, I don't know, just with, this age of like so many people being on GLP ones and rapid weight loss and all this different kind of stuff. It really like puts you back in a weird place. And I already went through this once in my lifetime, like all of us, you know, millennials, we've been through this. We went through this 20 years ago and now here we are going through it again. And it's just like, God, it's just tough. It's just really tough. It's hard not to compare yourself. It's hard not to, I don't know, wish you had a different body or whatever. And I'm kind of getting to the point where like my clothes are fitting a lot tighter and um, you know, it's not about the clothes. Clothes can be changed, like that's not a big deal, but it's just, I've, I've gotten to a place where I'm uncomfortable. I feel uncomfortable and um, I'm really struggling with like what to wear. Everything I'm wearing, I feel like I'm just dressing to cover my body and like how can I hide my body in the most dramatic way possible, like big oversized silhouettes and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, I'm just trying my very best to maintain like a balanced, nuanced perspective with it all. But yeah, full disclosure, I'm just trying to implement some changes in my life and I'm still gonna enjoy the holiday season, of course, but I also have the added layer of having like SIBO on top of it, which is directly impacted by food, the food that I eat. And so like the cherry on top of it all is just that I really, really, really feel terrible when it comes to my SIBO. Like the, the bloating, the swelling of my stomach, I know what foods don't make me feel great and I eat them anyway. And I know that a lot of people do that, but I've gotta, I've gotta start treating myself with more kindness and um, making choices of foods that are gonna nourish me and make me physically feel good. Um, but without restricting and like going into a bad place at the same time, you know what I mean? I know a lot of people who are watching this are gonna feel me and are gonna understand where I'm coming from, but also I feel extremely nervous talking about this because it's such a delicate topic and I care so deeply about this topic. I know like 99% of us who are watching this are also going through body image struggles because it's just part of being alive, you know what I mean? But anyways, just wanted to start off this vlog with like a very honest, sort of update of where I'm at and share my thoughts on my body image at the moment. Not great. And I've done this throughout the years and I'm so sorry if it comes across complaining. I'm really not trying to, but uh, the old body image, big thumbs down at the moment, you know, not doing great, but there's opportunity to change that. And so if you are also struggling, please just know you're not alone. You are not alone at all. I guarantee more people are feeling the same way you are than not. And I know that when I witness people kind of opening up about their experience with struggling with body image, even though it's sad, it like makes me feel so seen and so heard and like understood, you know? So anyway, okay, I'm gonna take a few more minutes to just kind of ground myself, enjoy this beautiful weather, 
have have some deep thoughts and then we're gonna head home and get our day started but yeah i'm just sending everyone who's watching this a lot of love i'm feeling so emotional over vlogmas like i've been getting so many amazing comments and messages and dms from people i got a dm from someone the other day that was like watching my vlogmas on their tv i've gotten quite a few of those on instagram and they said something like i'm always rooting for you forever and like i literally just started choking up like i was just like oh my god you guys are so incredible and supportive and i hope you know that there's not a second of any day that i take that for granted i really sincerely hope you feel it back from me and none of this would be possible without you guys watching so i really appreciate it anyways i don't want to cry this morning so we're gonna enjoy this beautiful scenery and we will catch up later Lots of deep thoughts for 8.30 in the morning. All right, just got out of the shower, just getting ready now. And I just posted a video on Instagram and TikTok of the clip from the vlogmas that actually went up today so this is vlogmas number four uh vlogmas number two went up today so i'm like a couple days behind um just to give myself like a little bit of buffer room but anyways vlogmas number two went out this morning and i just had a moment where i was like oh my god i should include a little clip of <laughs> our christmas tree falling off the car and put it to the lyrics of defying gravity because like number one i can't get that meme out of my head if you know that TikTok, that interview that cynthia and ariana did where that woman was talking about holding space for the lyrics of defying gravity anyway it's just become like a funny little internet meme so i decided to like do a take on that and put it into the vlog and i'm so glad i did i'm literally not kidding i was watching that back laughing hysterically like i truly was laughing so hard to myself by myself drew was also laughing out loud when i showed him and it's just funny stuff so, yeah anyway okay so i'm getting ready now this shirt does not want to stay down for some reason i actually have some main channel filming to do today so this should be interesting because i've actually this is my first time during vlogmas where i've done both on the same day but Today I just want to be like a really kind of chill at home vlog. I know most of my vlogs have been at home vlogs so far for Vlogmas, but just like a more casual day in the life chatty kind of vibe and less of like a decorating my entire house for Christmas or doing like only Christmas things. Cause you know, we gotta resume normal life as well. What I really need to do next, the way I said that reminded me of, what we really need is a, <laughs> um if you know you know but what i really do need to do is wash my makeup brushes uh the fact that i actually can't remember the last time i washed my makeup brushes is probably telling you're supposed to wash them like i think once a week uh i've not been doing that so maybe that's what we can do next after i get ready and if you needed the reminder to wash your makeup brushes you probably did because i did maybe we'll do that here in a little bit um, what else do we have on the agenda today? I have hopefully an advent calendar unboxing to do for you today. We ordered an advent calendar this year for Vlogmas and it's been delayed. So as of the day I'm filming this, I think it's December 5th, 4th, and um, it still hasn't arrived. So I'm hoping that it's coming today. I think it was estimated to arrive today, but we'll get it at some point. Life's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's all good, but I'd like to start, you know, checking out what we got for our advent calendar. I think it's mostly like chocolate or something like that. So anyway, I'm going to finish getting ready and we will catch up in a little bit when it's time to film. Just realized I still haven't cleaned this mirror, but we are ready now. I'm going for a very comfy, cozy vibe today. That's just what I'm feeling. This top is actually from ASOS. I'm wearing like a little white tee underneath it with my vintage charm necklace. Probably gonna throw on some glasses. I've got my Levi's baggy dad jeans and that's pretty much today's look. So let's head into my office. I also have a quick little package to show you and then we'll do some filming. Okay, we're in my office and before I get started filming, I wanted to share one of the small businesses that I ordered from 
for Christmas. So if you watched my main channel video where I filmed a gift guide for 2024, I included a bunch of small businesses as well. I did just like traditional gifts. I did beauty themed gifts. I did thrifted and secondhand gifts. DIYs, handmade stuff, and I also featured some small businesses. And so these are gonna be trickling in over the next couple weeks, so I thought that I would share. This is from a brand called Not Picasso. It's a black owned business, and I ordered a couple things. So on the front, it has a little sticker that says Not Picasso. Very cute stuff inside. How adorable is that? Let's open it up. Aww. So there's a couple little stickers in here. We have a little sunny angel. We have a not Picasso strawberry sticker. And then a thank you very much for supporting our small business. We pour so much love into each piece and we hope this package brings you lots of joy. Probably kind of blurry, sorry about that. But you get the picture, cute. Okay, so the first thing I ordered, actually what did I order? I can't even remember. Oh yes, okay, this is a pair of earrings. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. It's like a little pair of cloud earrings. These are adorable. And then the other thing I got was, this is cute. This is like a little strawberry claw clip. Look how cute this thing is. Are you joking? It's got like three different colored strawberries on it. I'm obsessed. Yeah, that's gonna be really hard not to keep for myself, but how cool is that? So I will definitely link their Instagram as well as their shop down below. Highly recommend shopping from them. Just wanted to share a couple of small businesses as well. Cause you know, I share a lot of like, here's my link to my Levi's jeans or whatever, but I also think it's cool to showcase some small businesses for Christmas. This arrived pretty quickly as well. All right, time to film. I've been procrastinating for long enough. All right, just finished my lunch, and would you look at what just arrived? I think it's our advent calendar. Drew got the package and he said, who the hell are Harry and David, your boyfriends? I said, yes. Harry Styles and David Schwimmer. <laughs> Ten months. I was a Ross girl, what can I say? Let's check it out. Oh yeah, by the way. I don't think I said that. Um, we got a Harry and David calendar this year. I know really nothing about them, but I just wanted to try something a little different. Give us a little sweet treat every day, you know? This is massive. Oh my goodness. Whoa. This is fancy. Oh, it's wood. I did not <laughs> expect this. Oh my gosh. So here is what it looks like. Should we open the first, well, four? Cause today's the fourth. Sure, okay, so we have little drawers, which is really cute. And you can also like re reuse this. So you can put other things in it and then reuse it as an advent calendar. That's kind of genius. Oh, something fell. One of the reindeer. <gasps> Aw, one of the reindeer broke on the way. That's okay, you get the picture. Okay, today we have dark chocolate truffles. Those look delicious. What else? Number two, we have, these are really stuck in there. So they're all different truffles, I would imagine. These are mint chocolate mini mint bun. And I like that there's two in each one, so Drew and I can each have our own. Um, oh my God, there's three in this one. Oh my God, there's four. Number three is, ooh, this is something exciting. What is it? It's a sugar cookie. Cute, I love this. How fun, and then four is, I think more mints. Dark chocolate mini mint, ooh, fun. So we have all of these to eat today. That is so exciting. Really, it's like, do I go until eight because this is Vlogmas number four? I mean, we can open it every day. Yeah, that's true. Okay, should we taste test some of them? What is it? <laughs> So we have dark chocolate truffles, dark chocolate mint, milk chocolate mint, and a sugar cookie. He goes, mint? Mint toothpaste. <laughs> I like mint. So let's try the dark chocolate truffle. Drew isn't feeling well, he's off camera. He has man flu, just kidding. You. <laughs> I do not have the man flu. You take that back. I'm joking, he has tonsillitis, most likely. Okay, <clears throat> cheers. Oh shit. Very chocolatey. Mm, pretty good. Very rich. 
Oh, it is. Okay. Then I'll try one of the milk chocolate mini mints. Or should I try the sugar cookie first? Because I think mint is going to be the remaining. I don't want to. Want some of this cookie? Hmm. That's a shortbread cookie. Or oh, it's a big off or something. A very close dough. <laughs> Bit your chocolate though. <laughs> I think you'll like it. Good snap. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Every time I laugh, my throat is bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try a milk chocolate mini mint. Um, no. Tastes like <laughs> tastes like Andy's, like the Olive Garden mint. It's not bad, but. I think I'll like the dark chocolate one better. Mmm. Not bad. What we'll probably do is put all these in like a little bowl, all the unused ones, and then like when our guests come over for Christmas Eve, we're hosting Christmas Eve this year, they can go nuts. We need a Christmas bowl. We do need a Christmas bowl. Here is gonna be our collection. But like, not too bad. I like those better than the C's ones, I think. You got like three things from the C's candy. Yeah, true. Repeating over and over again. Well, we'll see how this goes. But this was quite expensive. I kind of just panic ordered it because I knew that I needed to. And it didn't even arrive until the 4th anyway. So we shall see. Very delicious. All right, back up in the office. Just changed, threw on a different charm necklace. This one's from Target, I think. And then I thrifted this little red cardigan. It's giving a little bit of like, I work at Target, but also I'm not mad at it. I'm gonna potentially pick a pair of glasses to wear. Maybe, might not wear glasses for this next video. I have to film my next main channel video. I was actually gonna run to the grocery store, but I decided to place an order online. Sorry, I just put on lip gloss so that I can multitask. You know, you pay a little bit more, but it's like I'm filming while someone else is doing the grocery shopping so it's like you know peak multitasking energy so I'm gonna film this video It'll probably take like an hour ish I'm doing laundry from the first video that I filmed and I have to like try on that stuff um, after it's done being washed so I'll do that I do still want to wash my makeup brushes we'll unload the groceries we were feeling really lazy for dinner tonight we forgot to take out chicken to thaw so we don't have any meat that's de-thawed in the freezer so we just got a rotisserie chicken so that'll be really good and yeah in the meantime, I am gonna get started on this filming. I have a lot of yapping to do, so I better start doing it. Okay, we did it. All right, just finished filming, feeling really good about it. I am like feeling accomplished. It's about 4 p.m. now, so the day has really, oh my God, I thought that was my hair. The day has really gotten away from me and truly there's only like another hour of daylight left, which is insane. But I thought it was funny because I got a text message while I was filming from basically like, I'm like, do I do a story time? Probably. Should we sit down and have a chat for a minute? I think we should. Okay, I'm just gonna put you right where I was filming my other video. But basically, I, um, Drew and I have been, full disclosure, like we've been looking casually for places, well, not even necessarily casually, but we've been looking for places in LA. Like we know for sure that we wanna live back in LA. We're just kind of trying to find the right timeline and find the right place. And the rental market in LA right now is no joke. I have seen so many people go on like apartment hunting videos and then end up just like staying where they're at because it's just getting so expensive and so crazy. But we viewed a place We've viewed a few places actually, and um, maybe we'll do like a compilation, like apartment tour someday. But we, uh, there have been a couple times where we found places that are like absolute gems and it didn't end up working out because of the landlord. <laughs> like they ended up just being like total scam artists or we just got really weird vibes from them or they were like straight up discriminatory, like crazy stuff. So it just reminded me because this landlord that I got a text from isn't the same one that I'm talking about. This was someone that was like, hey, I have another unit. Like, are you interested? And it just made me think about about the rental market and how I haven't like talked about this yet but basically I'll try to keep this short because it's like really dumb and it happened probably like two months ago I want to say but Drew and I had taken a trip to LA because we really really loved this one apartment 
and we wanted to view it. It was similar to where, kind of close to where we lived before. And we were like, well, okay, well, while we're there, let's look at a couple other places. So we just had some like backup places, but we were pretty sure this one was gonna work out. Well, it turns out that one didn't work out. It was like not exactly what we thought. Um, and so we ended up viewing these other ones as backups and there was one that we absolutely loved. It was like a little townhouse. It had vintage features. It was a little bit dark, but it was great. And the landlord themselves were showing us around. It was like an older couple and they gave us like grandparents vibes. Like it, we were just like, oh my God, they seem so friendly. They're so warm. They were talking about like, oh, we can't wait to meet your moms and all this kind of stuff. Like we're very family oriented. You're gonna love your neighbors, yada, yada. They had asked us like, oh, where did you used to live in the neighborhood? Cause we said that we used to live around. We were like, oh, we lived like blah, blah, blah. And they were like, oh, this side of the neighborhood is way better. That side of the neighborhood's super loud, da, da, da. And we were like, oh yeah, like we lived on like kind of a busier street. So it was loud, but really what was the kicker was we had these neighbors that like left their dog outside 24 seven and it barked all the time. And like, I've kind of briefly talked about that, but anyways, so like that was that. We go about viewing the place. We were like, we definitely want to apply. They were like, perfect, we'll send you an application. And I think this was like round about the time that we were visiting Sierra in San Diego, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this was like, I think October, beginning of October. So Drew and I are in this hotel room in San Diego, like gathering all of our stuff, you know, collecting. It takes so much to apply to places and we've done it like 10 times this year. So it's kind of normal at this point, whatever. Long story short, we send them our information and they told us, I think like after they had already sent us the application, they like called us, I wanna say, or maybe they told us in the moment, I can't remember, but they were like, hey, just so you know, we require a co-signer no matter what for um, like all of our tenants. And we were kind of like, oh, well, yeah, we don't need a co-signer. And they were like, yeah, it's just kind of like for our safety and protection, whatever. So we were like, okay, interesting. So I asked my mom if she would be a co-signer, which she was like, okay, like why? <laughs> but I was like, I, she hasn't co-signed for anything for me since I was like 18. So whatever, she was like, I feel a little weird about giving them all of my information. Like she had to fill out her own application and like all this stuff. And we were just like, I mean, whatever. If it's like a weird little thing that they require, I guess that's fine, but whatever. So we do it. My mom is texting me being like, do you have a weird feeling about this? And I was like, no, they're the nicest people. Like, don't worry about it. They're just old school. Like they just want that extra layer of security. They kept mentioning that. So whatever, we send our applications, probably two days goes by and Drew gets a call from one of the landlords and I think he misses the call or something. So then they call me and I happen to be upstairs. So I answer the phone and basically it's both of them on speakerphone and they're like, hi, um, we need to like talk to you about your application. And I was like, yeah, okay. And they were like, we only have one co-signer showing up here. And we were like, yeah, we sent you our co-signers information. And they were like, yeah, we need one co-signer per applicant. And we were just like, yeah, but we qualify for the apartment by itself. So I just, I don't understand. Anyways, they were like, it's just in case something happens to one of you or both of you. And I'm just like, this isn't how this works, but like whatever. So I was just like, yeah, if you're gonna need two co-signers, like we're not gonna move forward because we've already inconvenienced my mom and like we're not gonna inconvenience someone else. And she goes, yeah, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Um, my husband was really upset when he saw your co-signers information because she can't afford this place by herself. And I was like, first of all, yes, she can. And second of all, huh? Like she's, and I go, she's not applying to live there. So it doesn't really matter. And then she was talking about how separately Drew and I, our finances are like a little bit different and how like, if we didn't live together, then we wouldn't make as much money and be able to pay for the place on our own so that we were gonna like be more of like a liability because what if we break up type of thing? And I'm like, sure, I guess. But like, you could say that with any roommate situation. It doesn't, I don't know. There was definite, um, they kept reiterating stuff about us not being married, which like is illegal. <laughs> it definitely is illegal. You cannot like not accept people because they're not married. So anyways, she made some comment. It was like kind of both of them. Um, I get a lot of questions from landlords about like my income, like how do you make this income, yada yada. And I'm just telling this story because it's lighthearted and funny, okay? I don't want anyone to get like mad on my behalf. This is supposed to be silly. But he was asking me questions about my job because I own an LLC. That is how I pay my taxes and do all of that. And um, it's only me. And so he was just like, what, you know, these payments are coming from this place and this place, so what does this mean? And also what value do you bring to these companies? And I was just like, huh? Like just absolutely grilling me about my job. Then she starts speaking and says, oh, and actually um, I called your last landlord and I asked him about the barking dog and he had no idea what I was talking about. So do you care to explain that? 
And I was like, because I never told him about it because it was the building next door and it had nothing to do with him. Like what? It was just like, they were so strange and the things they kept doing over and over were just weird. And the, she made some comment about like, you may operate as a family, but dot, dot, dot. And it was just like, oh, <laughs> uh, what? And so at that point we were just like, yeah, this isn't gonna be a match. Never mind. bye bye, whatever. And that place is still on the market. So it's just funny, like, I don't know who gave these landlords the audacity, but the fact that they just are so emboldened, it makes me spiral a lot of the time. And I'm not like, I don't wanna make such a bold statement about all landlords, cause then I'm gonna get people being like, well, I'm a landlord and I do this. This is just my personal experience, like being a renter, especially in a bigger city like LA, like they don't care about you. They don't care. They don't care about the quality of their home. There's no pride of ownership at all whatsoever. Obviously like this is like passive income for them. And um, yeah, there was just so many other weird things. I wish I could remember some of the other things that they were saying and doing. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> We've had a lot of experiences like that. There was another place that we loved. Oh my God, we were obsessed with back in like September-ish. We applied for it and then out of nowhere, the landlord just started like going off and being like, um, I don't have the capacity to put in a new washer and dryer. Um, so you're gonna have to pay for that. And we were just like, huh? And then like the house was just not in good condition. And he was like, yeah, I don't have the capacity to like clean it. Um, and I'm looking for really low maintenance tenants. So maybe we could um, set aside some time and go through a list of things that you're responsible for and things that I'm responsible for and we're like yeah you're responsible for everything it's your house and he was like well yeah like but like minor cosmetic things like cracks in the walls and like you'd be and we're like <laughs> like and then they were like oh and the deposit is fourteen thousand dollars huh like it's just insane and I know there are gonna be people that are like that's a sign you're not supposed to go to LA I completely get that but it is very much just the way things are. It's not um, anything new or special. It just kind of is what it is. So honestly, we've experienced bad landlords everywhere that we've lived. I've had them in Tennessee. I've had them in Maine. I've had them in freaking Arizona, LA, it doesn't matter. So anywho, I'm gonna go wash my makeup brushes because I promised myself that I would do that. I'm pretty sure I heard the groceries getting delivered. Good to know that that's like there and ready to go. And I would say that I had like a pretty successful filming day and I just felt like yapping. I wanted to tell you the story about weird landlords. <laughs> Maybe someday we won't have to worry about having a landlord ever again. All right, we're doing it as much as I don't want to. Also, side note, we've only had a few delivery drivers since then, but like our grocery delivery person just took snacks from the snack cart and every delivery driver that's come so far, I think there's been like three, have taken snacks and they've been like, thank you. And it just makes me so happy. Let's wash these brushes. I just wash mine with a little bit of Dawn dish soap, like a couple drops for each one. And I used to have a little silicone thing, but I don't know what I did with it, so it's fine. Beautiful. Look at that, all clean. So glad I did that actually. All right, we just made dinner. We got our rotisserie chicken, asparagus, Trader Joe's frozen sweet potatoes that I put a little marshmallow fluff on top of, and some barbecue sauce. That's easy dinner. Um, so it's like 9.45 in the evening, and I totally forgot I was vlogging. <laughs> Drew and I have been sitting on the couch for the last like two hours after we ate dinner, just like watching TV, chatting, showing each other TikToks. And I just realized I completely forgot to end this vlog. But um, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed a nice little chatty vlog. I was definitely in the mood for that, but I think next vlog we're gonna like go out and about and do some stuff. So I know I don't need to explain. You guys are awesome and don't care no matter what I film and post. So I really appreciate that. But anyways, if you couldn't tell, your girl is tired, it's been a long day. So thank you so much for being here and I will see you very soon for vlogmas number five, bye.